What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 32 and probably the second last part of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Torox the Brass Bull campaign. So as we saw last time, the Corn Gores, chosen Corn Gores I should say, made their debut against the little uh, wood, wood Elven Settlement or Wood Elven Outpost, followed by Kazrak and his Bestigors, now in decent numbers, making their debut against an absolutely massive, massive horde of undead. Kazrak obliterated them in a fantastic battle, and I don't think for him anyway, we'll see its like again. Nonetheless, it was very enjoyable, and we've got a few more battles to get before we get to the end of the campaign so let's jump right into it first of all Turox you have to move you're moving all the way to Athaloran now so go into regular stance and go past Dragon Falls, which we will raise, and in fact we should probably move in such a way that we move that way all right uh, do we even need ruination stance for this maybe Find out. Auto resolve, obviously, because we're not bothering with that garbage, even if it is the Fey Enchantress, and yeah, barely even any damage. We will loot and raise. 5k, not bad. Funnily enough, while Dread is no longer as useful to us as it used to be, money still quite useful. Uh, next up, I mean, we're probably not going to bother completely annihilating annihilating the uh, the wood elves because they're not actually an objective of ours and Reikland and the oak of ages are the main thing plus the last battle and maybe if we can catch a few really good battles at a few of the uh, a few of their trees we will certainly take the opportunity i would like to see torox versus durthu or torox versus orion and just torox versus any big uh, wood elven a lord that he can find and oh would you look at that it's a little it's a little beast man tribe oh look at them being adorable i didn't know that any of them still existed i think we saw these guys spawn and they immediately took the place i want to protect them mm, too bad we can't do an alliance with them <laughs> All right, well, we'll see if we can uh, get them to survive or something. Anyway, Morgur, still looking, my friend, still looking. What are you still looking for? Still looking for that damn uh, Kislevite army. And that's been promised. I guess we could march all the way back down to Zavastra and try to fight these guys here. They're clearly building an army. But I really wanted to fight Serena Katrin, which just hasn't been happening. Well, let's destroy these things around here, and then we'll maybe loop back down. Somebody's gonna have to fight Morgur eventually. Somebody with a proper stack. At least I hope. Alright, and I'll resolve this. Yeah, maybe it was a mistake to go to Kislev after all, just by virtue of the fact that we can't seem to... Uh, uh, can't seem to find enough Kislevites to kill. Uh, you, sir, can you reach Bulga's Grad? Alas, you cannot, but you can go into Raiding Stance sort of near it. And heal up to full there. Take out Bulgusgrad. Maybe get the bear's teeth as well. And we can also pop this ritual. And it's also stay nearby and, you know, maybe. Still hopeful that uh, Serena Katrin does come down. She's got to be fighting someone. We've taken a decent chunk out of the heart of her empire. So, you know. Uh, anyway, Kazrak, you will finish up with... Uh, the Temple Hub. Is this their last settlement? What? It is indeed. All right, so they are done, and we can e we can just auto resolve this, and we don't even need to deal with you. All right, easy little auto. Really, really, damn! Auto resolve doesn't like Kazrak's army either, does it? Hmm. You know what? Just to guarantee that it heals up to full, let's just not bother with the money and get the maximum healing instead and also head back through Fort Oberstire and then out here. The vamps are pretty much done. We've left uh, remnants of these factions, but they're stuck in blood grounds. Blood grounds that are plaguenated all over the place and chaos corrupted, so they can't really uh, do anything or recover. It's working. Um, Torox, just to double check, you're not able to rampage up. now. you're not there yet. Not there, not enough momentum. It's okay. You'll go to Beast Paths and you'll jump over all this stuff. And if you get intercepted by Wood Elves, well, that'll be a good thing. Um, Malagor, you're going to head to Mr. Thomas Alderman here. 
Can get a quick little ambush against him. Please don't tell me the giants got wrecked by that. A little bit of damage. Uh, we'll devour captives to heal up the giants slightly. And then we'll head to what is, I believe, the final settlement of Clan Eshin. Let's see if they actually have a stack there or anything else. And they do not. They do not have a stack there. Well, that's a disappointing, but what can you do? We've fought rats so, so many times already. A raise in advance, and the faction is not destroyed. They do... Oh, right, they... They have another settlement, don't they? They took Durango. Durango... No! Scryer must have taken Durango. These guys have nothing left. But they do still have that army, so they gotta go somewhere. And we'll find out where. Uh, Malagor, you're going to retake Durango, and then we're probably gonna have you sail out here to the Silent Isle and take out Musion. Maybe that'll be your final battle. I'd like to guarantee a fight with a massive number of enemies, if possible, and that's probably the best way to guarantee it. And uh, let's just make sure... And that these guys can't actually attack any uh, nearby areas. Like so. Bunch of Ungor Raiders. And then we'll get, uh, I don't know. Say three Telscore Chariots. Some Gore Herds. And maybe some other stuff later. Not super important. I doubt that they'll actually attack us, but, you know, why, uh, why risk it, right? Oh, also, I forgot. There was a place here somewhere where we didn't have enough money. Yeah, Raisal. Didn't have enough money to build stuff. There we go. Not that the plague one is super necessary anymore, but anyway. Anyway, let's continue. Gotta make it through these last few turns. Aberku, you are going to besiege Largos, and as soon as we end the turn, they will sally out and attack you. Uh, Centigors will be stolen, but we're going to sit here anyway, like so. And yeah, this is about as elite a stack as we're liable to encounter with regards to the Slaneshi. A Keeper of Secrets, a Soul Grinder, so, so many spawn of Slaneshi, and the spawn are actually very tough for this particular army to deal with. They don't go down easy, and we would have to probably engage them all with our piles of, uh, with our piles of Cygors. Yeah, this one would be very tough. All right. Excited for the concept. It's uh, one it's again. It's going to be another do or die for the uh, uh, for the Zinchin army. I mean, Zinch likes to screw with his followers, so <laughs> it's clearly still happening. Anyway, the rest of you are good. We could probably give you some items, but it's also probably not important enough, at least not right now, to bother with. Uh, Sidhu Bailhorn, you are going to attack the dwarfs, and you're going to do it this turn, but let's move everybody else around in such a way that we're happy, and then we'll deal with that. In fact, there really isn't much more to move. Where'd the Gorehorn? You are headed to Dukelberg and the destruction of the Empire. You're building his Razor Gore chariots. And the Slaneshi army is nearly complete. More importantly than that, though, is a Nurgleite army. It is time for you to get to work once more. Birnoth Kragbrow, with a fairly decent elite army, the Slayers and the Giant Slayers in particular are going to be a pretty big issue for us. Our Doggos are also unfortunately hurt, so we will have to be quite careful with them. Away we go. Will we get an ambush here? We... Oh, no, don't go here. We don't need to fight more dwarfs with a hurt army. Okay, let's try that ambush again. Didn't work that time. And didn't work a second time. Pyrrhic victory. And they do have a couple of artillery pieces. All right. It looks like an interesting fight, if nothing else. We'll have to be careful with our... Uh, uh, with our jabber slates against all those slayers and the bolt throwers targeting them inevitably. Sounds like a good time. Go. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Slayers and various assault, uh, assorted support units uh, versus 
Estigors, and various assorted support units. I'm very, very interested in this particular matchup. Now, the way that we're going to handle this is we Vanguard deployed over on the right flank here so that we can hit the enemy army perpendicular uh, to its deployment and start damaging a few of the units on the flanks. This will force the army to react to us, and once it does, uh, we're done which are currently hidden in this wood will run out of it hopefully engage all the miners with blasting charges and all the enemy range units and artillery before they can do too much damage to our pestigors pestigors moving in and it looks like some giant slayers will move in as well a few of them will go flying and it does look like we do have enough mass on the wargor chariots uh, to start working our way through them unfortunately this particular unit of giant slayers is going to have a very bad time as the two jabber slights and the war gores are here. So they really shouldn't have allowed this one particular unit to get isolated like this, but, uh, well, this is partly why we deployed in the way that we did. A few units will always get isolated before the enemy can uh, uh, react to you attacking them in this manner. And we also have other units moving in, however, some regular slayers facing off against some pestigores. Time to give them a good, solid, poisonous bullying. And it looks like the, oh wow, the giant slayers are pretty much dead, or at least the first unit of giant slayers is pretty much dead, and the regular slayers are down to about half HP. And jabber slates, I'm sure, helping quite a bit as well. We are also going to start to separating our forces a little bit. One of the units of chosen pestigors will move around to try to hit these miners with blasting charges, while the rest of our units continue making their way up the center. We're going to allow the enemy to react a little bit, and then we're going to start moving these charges chosen pestigors, though they are, by the looks of it, going to get hit by artillery a little bit. They currently occupy a really nice position between these uh, little camp areas, and but unfortunately it doesn't look like the AI wants to go for that bait and allow us to make use of the choke point. Oh well, I guess we're not hitting them with, uh, with Vile Tide in that particular area. And the, oh man, and the Jabber Slates would be really nasty in choke points as well. Speaking of Jabber Slates, they found the enemy Lord and they're going to push him around while the rest of our chosen Pestigors move on in and start fighting all the other Dwarf Warriors and Slayers as they blobbed up. They have also reacted and blobbed up sufficiently that the other four units of Pestigors can now spread out and our Pestilent Doggos can join the fray as well. Going to take a few hits from those Bolt Throwers, but too little, too late, as we charge in and destroy those artillery super quick. And a couple of the units will peel away to make sure that the miners don't hit us with the blasting charges and thereby kill off too many doggos. Corlers will fire at us, but we peel away a couple of units of pestigors, and the other units of pestigors will head towards the corlers in blasting charges as well. And there we go. Now they're engaged, and we've seen the Pestigor's best grave guard, so I see no uh, no issue with besting uh, dwarf warriors and miners and uh, quarrelers and whatnot. The enemy giant slayers here are going to be much more problematic, but soon, with the left flank pretty much collapsed already, and our lord following their lord, and we can simply reinforce with even more Pestigor's and send both jabber slights in to do a a little bit more work. Even if the uh, Giant Slayers are built to fight things uh, like the uh, Jabber Slates, they're just not gonna. Alright, and there we are. Poison and lethal poison combined ain't a great to have on you. And with the various slayers not having uh, not having armor, the complete lack of armor piercing, well not complete, but relative lack of armor piercing on the uh, chosen pestigors won't make much of a difference. So it all works for us. All right, and there we go. They're getting completely mobbed and surrounded. Now the battle is pretty much ours. In fact, the rest of the army has completely shattered. I believe the enemy lord has just died being run down by our beast lord. And now it's just a matter of killing off the last of the giant slayers that are still on field. Surrounded by doggos, hit by pestigors, and the jabber slates towering overhead. These dwarfs had a really bad day. 
maybe we should offer them some gifts of Nurgle and maybe they will, uh, maybe they'll turn. Alrighty, yes, few other Slayers are actually still alive, I didn't even realize that, but it's not to worry, we've got our Jabber Slights working through them. And I guess all the Nurgle units working through them in general. Alright, very, very nice. Get a few more hits in there and then the battle will be ours. Too many unbreakable units. Not that they're causing too much of a problem here, but uh, I can't even spot them in the fray anymore, and there we go. No need. Decisive victory and a very solid fight and showing from the Pestigors once again. Well, there we go. I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with the uh, with the Pestigors. The Nurgle force seems quite strong. The enemy army was a fairly decent one, and we came into it heavily damaged, and we suffered little damage. And despite all that, I'm very happy with the result. Very proud of Mr. Bilehorn here, and we will, I guess, heal up that we can continue on through their territory especially considering the oh we can actually reach the place let me guess it'll badly hurt us if we uh, if we go for it at least I'm 99% sure that it will but what can you do damn out of resolve just wants to keep screwing us over let's hope that it actually lets us do this without killing our doggos but it looks like it won't it will damage them heavily but at least we're good. We are, oh, 4,000 gold, but we have to forego it in order to raise in advance and return to our own territory to make sure that we heal up as much as possible. There we go. Not quite to full, but, well, gotta undo that uh, auto-resolve screwiness. Anyway, very well done to the Nurgle army. They did not struggle at all, regardless of the fact that they fought slayers and giant slayers. And I believe we're ready to end the turn. However, upon ending the turn, we will fight to this, and I guarantee we will struggle here. Now, this is not a great matchup for this particular army. Me. But nonetheless, I mean, there's not much we can do to change what we have. We could give him a little bit more items, but frankly, his items are pretty okay. Do we have ancillaries, the spawn wrangler? Technically, we don't need to carry the spawn wranglers anymore. But otherwise, this stuff is fine. It's just fine. And the axe of men would give us some armor sundering, but not too useful against most of the uh, Nurgle fort. Nurgle. Uh, I got Nurgle on the mind of the Slaneshi forces. Well, I guess that's what we're doing. And oh, we're not attacking. We're ending the turn like this. And wait, 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 wait. A moment. Hmm. Just in case we should build... Oh, I already did build, okay. Uh, I forgot that I had to uh, build those, because what if they don't sally out? I'm 90% sure they will, but if they don't, then we'll need to take this manually, which means we'll have to uh, build all that stuff up. Uh, the siege equipment. A little beast will rage on Aberku, but he's just recruiting, he's a temp army, he's fine. And we end the turn. 99% sure we're fighting Slanashi. All right, let's see what we're looking at. Ah, look at that. Another little uh, clan scryer army running around. Gonna be annoying us, eh? But not annoying us for too long, especially as the campaign is coming to an end, so what can they do? And yes, they will indeed attack us. They have a bunch of exalted demonettes, keepers of secrets. Those spawn are going to be a huge, huge problem. And to some degree, the soul grinder and the keeper of secrets is all well. really the entire army is going to be problematic. We may have to retreat, depending. But we'll find out. Away we go again. Alright, here we go. Time to finally knock these Slaneshi out. 
for good. Now, once again, they have a lot of good stuff in here. Tons of chaos spawn and absolutely tons of chaos spawn. A solid number of demon nets and that soul grinder and that keeper of secrets, some fiends and chariots and whatnot. It's a very strong stack. Now, that said, this time we have a very strong position here, a small impassable object that we can use to sort of funnel the enemy and a very big hill that the enemy is going to have to work their way up all the while being pelted by magical arrows which should counter at least all the non-spawn units fairly well alrighty and so it begins they've got a long way to travel up this hill and we're gonna do our best to block as many of them as we can and do as much damage as possible in particular to the demon nets and other demonic units gonna send in our lord and hero to block the enemy off a lash of slanish comes down right in the middle of our red sand gores though fortunately the shield holds and they don't take too much damage the enemy does decide to flank us with one of the units of a chaos spawn and while well, they do take about 30 percent damage they're in the fight now with those chaos spawn now this time i think once again rather than relying on our uh relying on our cygors to provide range support we're going to use them to provide melee support instead they would have been out here from the start but obviously they can't vanguard deploy and thus we had to slowly move them in out here we've targeted a few units specifically a couple of our units of chosen and Sangors are going to be going directly for that Keeper of Secrets, while the summoned Spirit of Gorok will be trying to knock down that Soul Grinder, who I've lost track of. Oh, there it is. Alright, well, now he's stuck with spawn, but not to worry, we'll get to the Soul Grinder eventually. Keeper of Secrets is down by about 30% of its HP. And we do have a couple of our uh, Cygors whacking away at it, though we do have to be careful about hitting our own Cygors with our own arrows as that's obviously going to be iffy. Fortunately, the Keeper of Secrets is down to about 20% HP. I think this is the only Keeper of Secrets we've seen in this entire campaign, unless I'm mistaken. And it will be the only one. And just a few more hits and down it will go, but I want to see the death animation. There we go. Very nice. All right, Cygors, keep anchoring the line and holding. We've sent in a few of our Centigors to back us up as well to uh, anchor or help anchor the line. Summoned a, a, a Feral Manticore as well. Everything to add single entities or uh, heavy uh, units in order to block those Chaos Spawn, which are such an issue for us. Otherwise, though, the balance of power is a about 85% in our favor, going fairly decently our way. We are Centigors with throwing axes here have managed to destroy a unit of Hell Striders and will probably move away rather than bother fighting and those exalted demon nets. And the fiends and the spawn still fighting. I think the soul grinder unfortunately dropped in there somewhere, but uh, well, we can't look everywhere. And it might have happened at roughly the same time as the uh, Keeper of Secrets, in which case, yeah, he had to pick one. All right, keep targeting those units with your arrows, chosen Sangors, especially while the Sigors hold the ground for you. Just going to back off the uh, Eye of Morsleeve as it is down to about 20% of its HP, and we don't want to accidentally kill it. A couple of volleys from those magical arrows, as we've seen them snipe so many heroes and lords, can be devastating if you're not careful. Yeah, damn those chaos spawn, but have yeah, the Cygors once again prove their worth in melee and just as well as range. And the Spirit of Gorok runs towards the last remaining of those chaos spawn, and oh, you probably don't want to be here, Centigore, you're going to get hit by range. And ah, uh, we finally managed to get the Eye of Morsley about down to about 20% HP, but alive. Spirit of Gorog manages to, by the looks of it, finally knock down one of those Chaos Spawn, and the last one here will fall. In fact, the last one on the entire map will fall, only those exalted demon nets remain, and they are melting away. And there's nothing they can do, because they'll never be able to approach our army. And we can always chase them around with the, uh, with the Centigors as well. 
All right, here they come. Spirit of Gorok is going to move in to meet them just because we can. Because who knows how many more times we'll see the spirit uh, before the campaign is over. And a few axes will fly in and demonettes be losing their heads. He does have that vile tide effect around him. Arrows drop in, but we don't care. And just like that, the battle is truly ours. Very nice. And very nice indeed. All right. And by the looks of it, well, we did take a little bit of damage on a few units. Certainly that Eye of Morsleep got hurt and several of those chosen Sangors got damaged. It went fairly well. Let's see the damage. Well, all right, that went actually quite a bit better than I thought it was gonna go. Once again, the Zinchin army does prove its worth, and we did the most damage on by the looks of it. 22.6k damage on the Riddle Bleeders, you did very well. One of the Saigors got 10k, in fact, a little, two of them got around 10k. Uh, we did, oh wow, the uh, Eye of Morsleep got pretty badly hurt, but otherwise, everybody did their job. Ungors less than the uh, Tsangors, but what can you expect? Anyway, the settlement has one unit that survived, so unfortunately we don't get to destroy it in a single go, but that's okay. Uh, uh, huh. Abyssa survived? Curious. Well, that's not going to last. Uh, channeling staff, Sahagun, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we've got 8 million plagues to receive. Uh, Risuzu is who? Okay, well, more leadership reduction for our, uh, somebody in the vampiric territories, but what can you do now? Would you look at that? Look at all these guys lining up to be potentially killed by Kazrak. Uh, he could go after the Tomb Kings. Hmm. We haven't fought Tomb Kings, and it wouldn't be the worst idea to fight them at least one time before the campaign is over. I certainly wouldn't mind. We may just have to do so. All right, but let's see what else we got to do in this particular turn. You are moving towards... Ooh, Ungrim Iron Fist. Wellity, wellity, wellity. Now, the question for you is... We don't want to be winded. Therefore... Hmm. We may not want to do hidden cam, but just do the regular stance. Stay here. Stay here and let's hope that Ungram attacks you. In fact, no, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he will. He's not just going to sit here. At least I doubt that he will. But we're not going to raid because that might screw us over because, well, uh, Vigor does have a tendency to do so. Uh, we will want to get to you, Shadowhide, because you might get ripped apart by those troll hammer torpedoes. You should get renowned and try to go through Retinue... Ah, no, let's get your many limbed fiend. And then to Retinue Physician afterwards. And then you are... You got your totems, you got your many limbed fiend. What are you missing? Huh. You got the necessary stuff, which means you're going through a renowned and onto right new physician. Huh. They both are level 16. What did I get one that I didn't get the other? Eh. Oh, I got one blade master. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Alrighty, let's keep everybody else moving. As long as we have a little bit of time remaining. Uh, Torox. It looks like you can go a lot further in your juggernaut stance. And this would take all of our movement. I think it'll be a waste. We are very close to the next rampage, but I think we just keep on moving uh, towards Athelorn. And ooh, hello. There is a uh, there's a settlement right here. Just got to make sure we actually are able to reach it. And there we go. Uh, to resolve it, shoot, that's a lot more damage than I was expecting. Oh, we're going to have to raise like so. I probably could have raised a herdstone here as well, but oh well. And cross the... Ah. I was hoping he'd cross the uh, river over to Bruce. But alas. I think regardless of that fact, we're just going to get as close as we can over here. Yeah, there's still a few uh, c territories left to Carcass Sun, but we don't really care all that much. And oh, Thoric Ironbrow's right here. He actually has a great defeat trait. We don't care about him right now, but he does have a great defeat trait. Uh, 
Yeah, gotta get that harsh rampage up and running and head into the interior here. But, well, Xandal's been destroyed. I... where's the Oak of Ages? It's right there. That's our objective, people. We're nearly there. So, so close and yet so, so far. Uh, hit Largos, please. This better not damage our... It still damaged our Cygors, like a heck of a ton. What the heck? Ah, oh, game. Uh, I guess looting right. I mean, I'm not gonna pass up 9k. If nothing else, there's a few items that we can buy from the uh, Dread Rewards, the item Dread Rewards. So we could do that. You can go back into Raiding Stance and take out the rest of Wolfric's territories. I assume he still doesn't want to peace out and would rather die. Well, let's make sure that he does. Alright. Uh, Torox has moved Morgur. Please, where are the Kislevites? What are they doing? <laughs> I think they just have so much territory that they that their armies are so far away that they're effectively useless. Uh, I think we're not going to bother crossing the river to further go further up north. And we could go af all the way after Prague, but... Hmm. I'm just not seeing any Kislevites. Oh, wait, if Prague is well defended... Wait a moment. Uh, hmm. One second. If Prague is well defended, maybe we could do a siege battle there. There is potential for it. Not a guarantee, but there is potential. But uh, we'll keep destroying everything around here. First, you head to the Bear's Teeth, which is also in the Blood Ground. And I believe the last of the areas in this one, at least. Frog is tier 3 by the looks of it. A stack there, though, would mean a nice fight for Morgur. Oh, I hope so. Alright, let's keep everybody moving. Srui the Hornbreaker. You... Oh, wow, this guy can move far, but he probably can't catch you. Uh, at least I hope not. <laughs> let's find out. Uh, you're going this way. Gotta plaguenate these guys as well. Kazrak. Oh, right, you're in range of the Tomb Kings, and more likely than not, we'll probably fight them, but uh, we'll see in a sec. Ah, Deathmaster Snitch. Well, well, well. Goodbye. You shouldn't have taken Durango. We're not going to fight him again. We already saw Torox rip him apart. There is no need to see it again with Malagor's spell work. All right, armor, another Spawn Wrangler, though that's not too useful to us. Stock for Malagor. Oh, man. That's disgusting as well, actually. And head to Durango to retake it one more time. And, oh, hello, there is a scry... Oh, it's just a pile of garbage scan. It says, oh, what the heck? They just, they just raised it? Weird, okay, well, we're gonna retake it then, and we're gonna rebuild it. Cost us a lot more money than I would have liked, but then, what the heck? Uh, Malagor, why are you underground? Well, Skaven, I guess. <laughs> all right. I was gonna. I was thinking about going to the Red Duke and destroying all of this, but would that be too similar to Kazrak's final battle? Hmm. I don't know. Still gotta think about it. Still gotta think about it. And you guys are still recruiting, but that's fine. You know what? Maybe get a couple harpies here, and a couple harpies there. They probably won't need any of these units, but who knows. Not crazy necessary. Anyway, Kazrak, you will move last because you have places to be. Aberku, you will move now because you need to transfer those Razor Gore chariots. And wait. Can we destroy the Empire right now? Wait, you move here. Take out Dukelberg. You need to go as far or as close to us as you can, so jump here. Leaving Kemperbat at last, and we have a defendant. All right, you take out Dukelberg and a Pyrrhic victory against this. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this between the episodes because that is just a horrific waste of time. And oh, hello, uh, you and you, goodbye. You're two unnamed ones. You, in, and you also in. Oh, that should power up the army a little bit. And a one and a two, very nice, and then we will level you up immediately to breakneck 
charioteers to both those chariots. Corroded will, blood on the wind. And totems, will the dark gods, many limb fiend, blood lust, renowned, and retinue valet, and retinue physician. Fantastic. And then you immediately. Uh, do we even care about scouting at this point in time? Maybe. Uh, Vissens Wild Form, Flock of Doom, definitely Wild Heart, definitely Pan's Impenetrable Pelt, definitely Curse of Anra here. Uh, Magical Reserve, Zero Thing, Arcane Conduit. Pop a point in Transformation of Kadan. I don't think we're gonna bother with Onslaught. I think I'd rather not risk it and go for a Natural Thirst so that nobody has to protect this mage. It's 30% HP, it's quite a bit. There we go, and he is on a Razor Gore Chariot. And now, how's this looking? Still Pyrrhic Victory. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that between the episodes. It's a waste of our time. That is. I mean, technically, I mean, these guys haven't fought, but uh, maybe we'll jump over and send them to Athaloran. Get the Corn Gores of Finale battle against one of the trees. Get the Slam Gores of Finale battle against one of the trees, if they can actually take one. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then we'll burn down the Oak and then fight the final battle with... Uh, uh, with the Torox. Also, you need to destroy this guy. Do a quick little auto resolve. And with that, the Empire is destroyed. Ooh, another Horn of the First Beast, and damn, stop getting hurt by everything. Uh, raise Herdstone, please. There we go. I guess you're keeping that Horn of the First Beast, and... Empire is not, in fact, destroyed. Oh. It will be destroyed. Oh, but it'll be destroyed between the episodes. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Oh, no. This is their last settlement. Just to double check. Alright, screw it. We're fighting this one now, then. It's one of our main campaign objectives. We gotta do it. Uh, you need to get Creatures of the Herd to buff up all of these guys, even though we probably won't get uh, in the benefit here. We'll fight this right now. We'll save Kazrak for the final episode, and I guess uh, uh, we want to because of his finale anyway, so that'll work out. Corn Gores, away you go one more time. Alrighty, I guess it's a god gore kind of a day today. We've had the Pestigores, we've had the Chosen Tortangores, and then now we have the Slangores as well. And uh, they are a lot more visible than the last time we saw them on this particular map, so we'll see how effective they are. And in particular, and uh, because they won't have the uh, uh, they won't have these Centaurs or Centaurs rather uh, moving through their ranks, but instead all the centaurs are deployed behind the enemy army and with our two uh, Tuscor chariots and we're just going to crush the enemy army between these two forces. Now this is going to hurt and the AI will be far far too slow to react to it as currently our Slangors move at 81 speed. They're faster than Chaos Knights on foot and our centaurs are at 108 speed as fast as doggos. So yeah. Now this army moves like lightning, but that's what you should expect from a Slaneshi host. So there we go, these Slangors are in it, and frankly I'm a little bit more interested in seeing uh, them fight than the... Ooh, nice chariot work. Uh, than seeing the Centagors fight, since we've been seeing Centagors throughout the entire campaign, and our time with the Slangors is much more limited. Now engaging those halberdiers and swords, empire troops of various types. And the halberdiers and the greatswords are going to be one of the ones that are threatening to the slamgors. All right, we got some halberdiers here, for example. Okay, this this uh, slamgor herd is fine, but this one got badly beat up. Look at that. Uh, dropped by 50 units and a lot of its HP to this unit of greatswords. We got 31 kills on them. That said, with that, the battle is pretty much over. Hey, uh, it's it's this army. It's always going to be uh, very quick. Either it gets wrecked or the enemy gets wrecked in a minute or so. Uh, that's what it's designed to do, and damn well is it doing it. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that battles with it can't last long by virtue of that, uh, but, uh, well, that's the price you pay when you ask Slanesh for a quickie. And let's just watch this last unit of great swords die they are still holding but probably not for too much longer 
And there we go. Just like that, they started moving. They shatter. And the battle is ours. A decisive victory. Not much longer than an ambush in that particular battle. But hey, we had three battles this episode. So, you know. Nice, nice. Though it's interesting to see how badly our, uh, well, two of our Slangors got mauled by those great swords. Uh, both the great swords did 6 and 5k damage to the Slangors directly hitting them. And yeah, yeah, we're supposed to use the Slangors to flank the enemy and hit him in the back rather than uh, and get right into him. But nonetheless, nonetheless, it's still working. Uh, this is the way we've chosen to build this army just because we can. And as long as it's survives it's just fine we will raise in advance to make sure those guys heal up to full and empire reichland finally destroyed very nice and we'll raise a new stone at Nome. not this turn apparently but uh, next turn not that we really need to should be that should in theory be auto resolvable and then after Nome, we'll jump over and ooh, there's a dearth Ooh, that would be good for David Hasselhoof. I'm sure he would enjoy that very much. Hmm. Well, hopefully. I was hoping to get Torox into it, but, uh, well, Torox is on the other side of the place. Anyway, with that, I am going to call this episode here. Next time will be the final episode as we hit Athaloran from two to three sides at the same time and get whatever final battles we can. Hopefully we'll be able to fight Ungram, but uh, generally speaking, it'll be a very battle-filled episode as finales do tend to be. And that one's, this one rather, is not going to be any different. And we still have the final quest battle to fight as well, the fall of man. And I guess even though we've destroyed the empire, I believe we will have to fight them one more time during this quest battle. And there's Carl Franz, and not to worry, I'm sure the Torox will enjoy taking him down as the final battle of the campaign. But anyway, uh, that'll be next time. Stay tuned for it one more time. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.